Hello, and welcome to Humanity Junction, where the big city intersects with humans. I'm currently working on a T-Track module, and this video will show the building of the case to be a portable control station for the current module and any future layouts. Living in a one bedroom apartment, I knew I wanted to create a control box where I had everything in one place with minimal connections back and forth between the modular layout. The first thing that I did was to determine all the pieces and parts that I wanted to include in the control box. The system is based around the DCC controller from Digikai's, the DR5000. I'm also including a Raspberry Pi 4 running Steve Todd's JRMI image, a DCC Specialties PSX2 circuit breaker, a Rolling Thunder receiver, and a Digikai's DR5097 Loconet splitter. The first thing that I needed to do was determine exactly which pieces and parts that I wanted to use, sorted everything out, and tried to determine what the best layout would be to fit in the case. Originally, I thought I could use a 10 inch by 10 inch case, but ended up going with something a little bigger. I decided to stack some things to have enough space, but I still wanted to make sure I had enough airflow around everything. Once I determined a layout I like, I took everything out of the case. I grabbed the Velcro that I like to use for these types of projects. Since the DR5000 is the main component of the system, I started out by mounting that unit. I ordered this plastic case from Amazon for about $7. It's a bit bigger than I ultimately wanted, but once I got everything installed, I was happy with the larger size. I used some clips on the side of the case to help me align the first piece of Velcro. I like using Velcro for these types of projects as it makes it easy to modify in the future. I was still trying to determine exactly the location I wanted each item, and which items I wanted right up against the edge of the case, and which items I wanted to make the connection further back into the case. I initially mounted the PSX2 close up against the edge of the case, but I realized I needed to move it back to allow space to get the cables to exit the case. Since I used Velcro, it was easy to just move the pieces back about an inch away from the edge of the case. Ultimately, I only mounted the Loconet splitter right up against the edge. In order to get the PSX2 closer to the DR5000, I disconnected the main cables so that I can shorten them. I'm using 12 gauge cables for the track wires and 22 gauge cables for the program wires. These are my new favorite wire strippers as they can easily strip any size wires. As I started mounting the PSX2, I realized that the soft bottom of the plastic case was not gonna work out for maintaining the Velcro connection. And with the PSX2 not being in a sturdy enclosure, I knew at this point that I needed to come up with a different mounting method. I needed a stiffer mounting surface, and luckily I had a piece of black foam core handy. I used the case as a main guide to cut out the foam core. I made several cuts to make sure I got a clean edge. I like using a T-square to make all of the cuts perpendicular to the edge. I wanted a tight fit, so I took my time making several small adjustments until I got the foam core to fit just right. Once I got the foam core cut to size, I moved the Velcro that I had already placed onto the foam core.
After getting the DR5000 and the PSX2 installed, I moved on to the LocoNet splitter. I decided to put the Rolling Thunder receiver on top of the LocoNet splitter to save space. I found this case on Amazon for a little bit less than $7. It was a little bigger than I initially wanted, but after getting everything in the case, I realized that it allowed me a nice bit of space to keep everything neat and organized. When mounting the Raspberry Pi 4 and trying to maintain a good path for the network cable between the Raspberry Pi and the DR5000, I realized that the Velcro would not be strong enough to hold the Raspberry Pi in place. I got out some plastic cable ties and with two small holes in the foam core was able to create a much better mounting solution. And next I marked out the holes that I needed to cut to allow the cables to enter the case. I used a china marker to mark out the openings. Using a spade bit, I pre-drilled some holes and then used an X-Acto knife to finish opening up the holes. To make the wiring universal, I used Anderson power pole connectors on the track and program outputs. I opened up the hole slowly until all of the cables fit as desired. I needed holes in the case for the power cables for the DR5000 and the Raspberry Pi, for the LocoNet cables going to the modules, for the track and program wires, as well as the speaker cable for the Rolling Thunder. I originally thought I could not remove the top from the case, but as I was cleaning it, I noticed that the top popped right off. One change that I want to make is to go back and mount the PSX2 farther from the edge of the case and closer to the DR5000. I'm doing this to strain relief the wires coming off of the PSX2 before they exit the case. The size of the case was also going to allow me to store all of the other cables and power supplies needed for the controllers. I bought the Raspberry Pi 4 from Konakit in Canada. I decided to go with their kit as this is my first time using a Raspberry Pi. This case turned out to be a really good solution for what I was trying to build. As I continue this process, I will be creating additional videos on the operation of the control box as well as how I intend to connect it to the T-Track module for operation. Thank you for watching and please leave any comments or questions below. and please subscribe so that you can follow along with my project. And have a great day.